Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. I don't care if he dies, just give me my website. I know, I installed it. You remind me of my son he passed away last year. I'm not really a computer person though. That's your job. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I don't care if he dies, just give me my website. Hi there TFTS. LTL, FTP, LOL, etc. I manage the servers and security for the web portion of our company, meaning I oversee a lot of websites, but also file storage and web-based applications. I'm happily browsing Reddit hard at work when my inbox starts filling with Priority 1 tickets. Clients don't have the ability to set tickets to Priority 1, implying the entire help desk just got flooded with calls that relate to me. I may have ruined some perfectly good trousers whimpered slightly. After a few moments of investigation, my inbox continuing to explode, I discovered that everything was down. Absolutely everything. Every website, file share, application, or what have you was offline. I called our data center. Our data center does have redundant versions of everything, so that if a primary server goes down the secondary seamlessly takes over, in theory. The trouble is they also have utterly insane building and power architecture. One of their techs was replacing some component and tripped, something big. Something so big the emergency systems kicked in and shut down all power to the system to prevent the tech from getting pumped full of Zeus humiliating levels of energy. Sadly, given the insane architecture, everything connected also had to be shut down. Everything connected was everything including all redundancies, backups, and even the UPS. I'm not saying this place was set up by hamsters with claw hammers, but I'm not saying it wasn't. Then my phone rings. Very few clients have my number, and even fewer would call me instead of putting in a ticket. Your characters. Chart your terrified, in over his head hero. SBS small business sadist. Our caller. Chart, hello, how can I help? SBS, our website is down. Fix it. Chart, we're very sorry about that. I'm afraid our data center has experienced a major outage and we're still working with them to get anything back online. SBS, not good enough. We need to be online right now, we're losing valuable business. Note I've seen the analytics for this particular business. They get maybe 5 visitors a day, tops. Yet somehow they always call within a minute of their service being interrupted. I should also mention they're paying for bottom of the line shared hosting. Chart, I understand that. There was a critical issue at the data center and sadly right now everything is offline. I assure you I'm working on it the best I can. SBS, there's duplicate servers there right? This shouldn't be happening. Chart, yes, there are. Unfortunately an engineer was placed in critical danger and the system came down to prevent the engineer being seriously injured. SBS, what? Note, up to now they've been loud but definitely not shouting. That changes from here on out. That's unacceptable. There shouldn't be safety measures in place that can bring down my site. Chart, I understand your frustration, but we have to put the safety of staff before our tech. Fortunately the engineer is safe and everything should start coming back online soon. SBS, no. I don't care if someone gets hurt. You can't just bring down my website. Chart, I'm afraid we really, really can't make that a policy. Subtly changes this ticket to a priority too, so it's seen to after many other servers. The conversation continued in that vein until the SBS realized I wouldn't let someone die just to keep their website up, as if I ever had that power, and they hung up on me. The servers started coming back, slowly, but given the massive damage done by having everything ungracefully shut down, read, the power got thrown off, many sites didn't come back for almost a week. It was a really, really bad week. I finally convinced my boss to allow me to do off-site backups. I know, I installed it. 
I've worked in IT for almost 25 years and now I'm considered a global expert in my specialty. I'm one of the people who made sure that anything on the internet was permanent and had a hand in building a major cloud service. In the early 2000s I was already considered an expert and was asked by my employer to present about a product at a bank who had just purchased it. I was part of a team with two other guys, each of US was going to give a technical presentation to the IT department. The first guy had been talking for about five minutes when someone entered the room and things started going downhill. He was heckling us. Well, when I was at, we had problems with that and blah, blah, blah. The guy had the most annoying, nasal, snide voice, just dripping with I'm going to blather on about how smart I am by putting you down. God, I wanted to punch him, but even worse I had to do my presentation in front of him. Maybe he'd stop after the first guy was finished. Oh no he didn't. The next guy got up, talking about a different but related product and its technical features, and he laid into him, well, had so much trouble with ISCSI that we had to blah blah blah. Oh wonderful. What I didn't notice was how the other people in the room were reacting to him. He was getting the side-eye, Isanth looks, and blatant glares from all the IT guys there. In retrospect, why the manager there didn't shut him up is still a mystery. So when my turn came, I decided just to plow through things and endure him. I started talking about my product and sure enough, he had to say something. Well, and we had one of these and it gave us a lot of trouble with authenticating into Windows domain servers, this was before Active Directory came out, not relevant to the story, but it gives the tech folks of an idea when. I stood there and listened to him, just nodding along, I can feel this one, no sweat. I know, I installed it. Dead silence. The OS was about 3.2 or 3.3, I think, I went on, not realizing what had happened, now we're on version 6 and, if I remember right, it was a Windows authentication issue and worked perfectly after a patch. Two seconds later it hit me. Oh crap. I just shut down the client. But I continued on with my presentation and he left shortly afterwards before I finished. All the IT guys came up and apologized, telling me he'd just come over from and couldn't stop talking about how they did things and why it was better. One guy said he was an ass and they couldn't stand him. Outside the bank, everyone was laughing and congratulating me for shutting him down, saying he'd stepped in it and stepped in it good. We were almost at lunch when we met the sales guy, who had been on the phone, and the first thing he asked was, who's Joe, not my name. Me, I replied, not certain how this was going to go but he shook my hand. That was freaking brilliant. I was so mad at that jerk and when you shut him down I jumped up and started punching at the phone yelling, yes. 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 Take that arsehole. I've told that story over and over since, it never gets old and never has happened again. I honestly don't want it to, I'm a professional that takes great pride in my work and he was the total opposite of one. It speaks volumes of their hiring practices that let someone like that get through. You remind me of my son he passed away last year. This happened yesterday. Just want to showcase that sometimes we can really impact people in a positive way and it isn't all restarts and plugins. I was working with a lady, troubleshooting Citrix desktop on a personal computer while at home. I was a little hamstring going into things because our workplace tends to use company computers that I can always remote into, ping, troubleshoot much more accurately. But we also dig the whole work from anywhere with any device model. That said, I did my best, and we eventually got her squared away. Toward the end of our conversation she mentioned that I sounded like her son and asked for my age. I told her that I'm 24, and she paused for a moment, apologized, and said that he was 25 and passed away last year due to aggressive leukemia. He was her personal at-home IT guy, moreover he was her son. She felt like, for one last time, he was helping her figure things out and talking her through the steps. Afterward I cried and texted my mom that I love her. Hold your loved ones close, life is fast and brutal. And the next time you auto and just remember you may just make someone's day. Best. I'm not really a computer person though. 
That's your job. This just happened. Client called. Can't log into computer. I try to remote in. Says computer's disconnected. I tell the client and ask them to restart. They ask what a restart is. I pause for a second, thinking they misunderstood. Me, click on the power button and select restart. Dollar client, whoa I don't use a computer a lot, where's the button? Me, it should be in the farthest bottom right, a circle with a line through the top. Dollar client, I'm seeing a lot of buttons but no circles. Alright, we'll do it at the unpleasant way. Me, we're gonna force reboot. Hold the power down for 10 seconds. Dollar client, where's the power? Me, on the box attached to it, probably says computer manufacturer. Dollar client, I don't use computers. Me, okay, well, I need you to find this box. Should be right there with the computer. Dollar client, I told you, I'm not really a computer person. Me, well I can't help unless we can find that box. Dollar client, I'm not really a computer person though. That's your job. Eventually we gave up, and they called their manager to come back in, after leaving for the day, to help them find a power button.